In this video, I'll be showing you how art can positively influence your mental health. I also have a very special guest who's going to share her experiences as an artist. Greetings, my name is Nigel Mayo and this is my channel Salad Green Boy. If you're finding me for the first time, this channel brings you weekly content showing you how you can improve your mental health. But Salad Green Boy, you gorgeous little entrepreneur I hear you ask. What exactly are the benefits of creating art on your mental health? Well, my extremely observant yet honest viewer, let me show you. So, according to the National Institute of Mental Health, major depression, a mood disorder that causes constant feelings of sadness and loss of interest, is one of the most common mental disorders. Standard treatments of medication and psychological treatment are helping a lot of people, but alternative treatments are being looked at more and more these days and research is starting to study the mental health benefits of arts and crafts. The thing is, studies suggest that painting pictures, making music, sewing shirts, and even creating cakes can have the following benefits on your mental health. Reduced anxiety. Anxiety and depression often go hand in hand. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, nearly one half of those people that are diagnosed with depression are also diagnosed with anxiety. A study called The Influence of Art Making on Anxiety, a pilot study, suggests that a little time working on art can significantly reduce a person's state of anxiety. Another study indicates that art allows people to forget about their condition for a while, allowing them to focus on the positive things in their life. So, being solely focused on an art project can have the same effects as medication, which suggests that it can help with your anxiety and depression. Improved Mood what researchers have started to document is something that we've instinctively known for a really long time. For example, quilting bees have offered colonial women a chance to get out of isolation. Craft competitions at country fairs has offered people in the 20th century some purpose. More recently, scrapbooking has given people the sense of pride and camaraderie. Recent research is providing more evidence on how arts and crafts can help lift a person's mood. For instance, a study in clay work that was published in Art Therapy suggests that handling clay is effective for reducing negative moods. Another study suggests that creativity also changes a person's perspective on life, which in turn helps them turn their negative emotions into positive ones. Increased happiness. Dopamine is a chemical that's associated with the reward center of your brain. Among other things, it provides feelings of enjoyment when you start or continue certain activities. A published study in the archives of General Psychiatry suggests that people with depression lack dopamine. Crafting is a non-medicinal way to stimulate dopamine, which ultimately makes you feel happy. In a study of 3,500 knitters, yes, I said knitters, Researchers found that 81% of knitters with depression found that it actually made them feel happier. So, if you or a loved one are suffering from anxiety or depression, I strongly suggest that you speak to a GP or doctor or any kind of health professional. They may recommend medications or counselling, but in addition to traditional recommendations, might I suggest that you consider taking some time to get creative. Here are some ideas. Join a knitting group. Not only can members help you improve your skills, they can also become friends and keep you from feeling isolated. Bake and decorate a cake. Colour in an adult colouring book. Paint a picture. Make a door wreath. Create a seasonal centrepiece for your kitchen table. Sew and dress a pillow cover. Get out into nature and take some photos. Or even learn to play an instrument. And these are just some examples. If you do feel that you want to start any kind of art and craft, there are millions of things you can do. Just look for them. Immersing yourself in what you love doing always has great benefits and will make you feel happier. But don't just take my word for it. I say that because today I am so excited to be inviting a local artist called Paula from Paula M. Martin Arts. Paula is also a fellow YouTubist. 
or as some people call us from time to time, content creators, and has been creating beautiful works of art on multiple media platforms for a while now. You can find links to her YouTube, Instagram and TikTok profiles in the description below. So recently I had the opportunity to ask her a few questions on how her art benefits her mental health. So without any further ado, let's begin, shall we? Hello to you all and thank you Nigel for inviting me to join you today on this video. I'm really excited to be here to talk about my experiences of how art and being creative can really help with your mental health. Hey Paula, thank you so much for joining us today. So just to start off, I'd like you to explain exactly when did you start creating art and who or what inspired you to start doing this? To be honest, I don't even remember when I started drawing. It's something I've always loved to do from being a child. I remember being fascinated by the fact I could see a blank piece of paper change form and an image appear. And my dad and granddad were always sketching or painting, so I think it was something really that I just grew up with. Okay then, and from watching your videos I can see that you create many beautiful pieces of work and highly detailed portraits, but for the sake of your videos you put them on a time lapse. My question is, how long exactly does it take you to do a piece of work from start to finish? My portraits are all drawn in graphite pencil and they can take anything really from between about 8 to 20 hours, the average being about 15 to 16 hours. It really all just depends on the subject, um, but about 15 to 16 hours is the average time. 16 hours, really? Is that all at once or do you take breaks from it? So if I'm working on a commission, I'll usually work on a piece for around four hours a day until it's finished, so four to five days at a time. And really it's only through experience that I've learned how important it is to set a limit as to how long I sit down focusing on one for in, in one session. Um, otherwise I would just sit there for 15 or 16 hours and not move, which, which isn't good for anybody. Oh, okay then, that's good. Because it really is important to take breaks, even if you're just doing it to de-stress. It's really important that you're not going like 10, 12, 16 hours on it. Otherwise, if you're doing other things, you are going to burn out. So, moving on, if I'm not mistaken, you've used your art to create some kind of an income. Could you just talk a little bit about that and what you have to offer? In my experience so far, starting an art career for the money is definitely going to be a disappointment. 90% of my work really comes in from portrait commissions, so it can be really sporadic. I can be working on two commissions in one month and nothing for the next two or three months, so it's definitely something that you've got to love. Um, first and foremost, creating art is the most important thing. And alongside portraits, I also paint quirky seaside art, which helps me to relax really and switch off after working on a detailed portrait. I do offer commissions for both portraits and watercolour paintings and I do also donate and create artwork to charity auctions throughout the year as well. Okay then, so with your art becoming such a big part of your life and it's become a full time thing, do you ever feel like it's become an obsession or an addiction? The thing is, I can tell you from my own experiences with using Warhammer as a get away from everything, there were times that, let me tell you, I couldn't get through the day without getting my model kit out and start painting. And yeah, for anyone who does Warhammer that's watching, it can get a bit expensive too. So my question is again, do you feel like you've ever become so obsessed that it's just taking over everything? Well, firstly I think I need to read up on what Warhammer is. If painting's involved, it sounds like it could be quite interesting. But um, has art become an obsession or an addiction? Possibly. I love creating so it's something I don't think I could ever give up, but with all things we come at become attached to, you need to set your own limits and be aware really when something is having any kind of a negative effect. In my case, I have to set limits such as the number of hours that I sit down for. If I allowed myself to, I would literally sit there for 15 hours straight to complete a portrait, but I know that really isn't good for my health at all. So I'm also a bit of a perfectionist and I do obsess over improving my skills and often feel my work isn't good enough. So during these moments, I do like to take a step back and try and remember really why I draw and ultimately it's for the relaxation and the calming aspect of it. Okay, great, that's, uh, that's good to know. Now, if you don't mind me asking, I know that art and painting, drawing, all that kind of stuff is really good for the day-to-day -day stresses of life, 
but if you don't mind me asking is there any kind of really tough time in your life or any really tough situation that it's helped you through? Art has definitely helped me through many difficult times like many people losing loved ones, being made redundant, dealing with illness, it can all take its toll and having something to turn to helps enormously. I'm very good at being the calming influence with other people but my own personality is quite the opposite really. I'm a frantic person, I don't relax easily, my mind's constantly ticking over, planning, thinking, dreaming, but sitting down with my pencil is the one thing that halts my busy thoughts instantly. I don't really understand why that happens, but it works for me. Okay then, um, I'd like to ask you, so how does it feel when you finally finish one of your works of art? I have really mixed emotions when I finish a portrait and often I'm glad it's over after looking at the same image for such a long time but sometimes I don't want it to end especially if the face is one I've got a connection to and they be good, become good company really and it can be quite hard to say goodbye I'm sure there's a theory behind that but I can't answer it it's okay, um, but I'd also like to ask how do you come up with ideas for your next piece? Inspiration for my next piece of artwork usually just appears, to be honest, from, from nowhere. I'll either wake up in the middle of the night with a great idea, or I'll come across a person that inspires me so much that I just have to draw them. But I rarely plan who I'm going to draw next, to be honest. Okay then, so going back to my question earlier about obsession, do you ever feel that you're so burnt out from it or being a full-time thing that you just cannot do anymore and you have to move on to something else? In the last year since I've been creating full-time, I've definitely had periods where I feel drained. At first I couldn't understand why I felt like this as I'm doing something really that I love to do. But it's all a learning experience and when you put so much energy and effort into anything really there'll come a time where you need to take a break from it just for a few days and do something completely unrelated. Okay and also does it have any effect on your social life as in does it um, for the look of any better term of the word do you feel that it makes you any kind of introvert? I definitely feel more introverted now but I think really that's come from two things. The first is from working alone rather than in my previous career where I worked within banking and I was used to working really within large teams of people. And the second thing is my age, um, without disclosing how old I am, but I do hold on to my true friendships and I've got a lot of friends and I do make friends easily, but I just don't enjoy the socialising part now much at all probably much like everybody at the moment but I think that's just part of growing older and being happy in your own company more than anything. Maybe I'm not an introvert, I don't really know. Actually yeah, how uh, how do you actually know whether you're an introvert or not? That's a good point. Might actually do some research into that for a future video perhaps. But for now what would you actually say to people who's considering taking up arts and crafts to take care of their mental well-being? If you've thought about using art or any other type of creative hobby to help with your mental well-being, my advice would be just pick up that pencil or paintbrush and start today. You don't need to use professional art supplies. Some of my favourite pencils are still the cheapest ones that I own and I think sometimes the one thing that stops people from giving it a try is that they don't think they can draw or paint, but you can. There's no right or wrong with that. Everybody can create something they should be proud of and you can't really make a mistake. Using art as a therapy isn't about creating a million pound masterpiece. It's about relaxing the mind and trying a new skill. Allow yourself the space just to be creative and it can help with focus, memory, confidence, so many different things. If anybody needs any encouragement to start or a little bit more guidance, I'm more than happy for you to drop me a message on any of my social media channels. Just drop me a question and I'll be there to support you all. That is awesome and I'm sure there's a few people out there who's going to take you up on that offer. And finally, I'd just like you to sum up what it feels like when you put your pencil to paper. Oh, I feel free when I create. Um, relaxed, calm, energetic and 
I'm in another world, I think, and I love it there. Thank you so much, Paula. That was an amazing insight. I have no doubt at all that this is going to influence viewers to create art of their own. So, if you want to see any more Paula and her art, and if you want to ask her any questions, as she very kindly offered earlier, then I've included links to her platforms in the description below. These are her TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube links. So, if you got any value from this content, I'd like you to consider smashing that like button, and also, let me know in the comments if there's any kind of art and craft that you are interested in trying. Because, it's like I always say, at the end of the day, it gets dark.